Hey everyone, you're watching another episode of In Studio, and today we have America Ferrer and Jay Baruchel. Hi there. How are you guys? Thanks for being here. Thank hey. you for having us. So we're actually kind of at your studio today at the what I kind of want to call the Hidden World, which is the DreamWorks campus. Where the magic happens. Yeah, exactly. The magical world of DreamWorks. Can you guys tell me about like kind of your favorite memories being here and, and recording here? And well, yeah, I remember the first time I got to see it, I was just like, it's a beautiful place to work, yeah. and it's a lot of green and water, and everyone seems to be in a good mood. And I remember there being and ping pong and um, <laughs> free and lunch, real That's delicious it. hamburger. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a great place to show up to work every day. Yeah, it's a super beautiful campus. And once I don't know if you ever got to do this, uh, well, I brought my niece and nephew to to watch the second movie premiere, and we got to come in and they one of the animators showed us how to draw some of the characters from How to Train Your yeah. Dragon, and it was so awesome. Were you able to draw Astrid? How did I that? did. I did my own version of Astrid. I think I did okay. Do you have it still? Or? I do somewhere. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> framed somewhere. Not framed, <laughs> no. Um, now, I saw the film last night, and I kind of walked away from it thinking, was that the greatest love story of all time? Can you guys kind of talk <laughs> about that? There are so many different relationships that the film explores, and yeah. it, it was beautiful. But the... Toothless and the Light Fury is an especially yeah. beautiful one because um, it's it has no words, you know. Uh, it's just uh, it's just emotion and two beautiful characters and uh, and I I think that's just a testament to Dean, uh, our director, who just sort of has um, a God given understanding of of what makes something special. Yeah, there were a lot of love stories yeah. in it. I mean, Toothless and Hiccup, Toothless. I mean, uh, Hiccup and Astrid. Hiccup and Astrid, and hi yeah, exactly. And um, you want all of them to have all the things, and then it's it's what this film has always done, what all these films have always done, which is even though it's a, a movie for children, supposedly, because it's animated, it never waters down or talks down to the subject or the audience. It's it's about change. Each of these films are about the world changing around you and, and the bittersweetness of having to rise to the occasion and be the person uh, that can meet that change and that new challenge. So these are not sort of sequels so yeah. much as chapters, chapters in yeah. a story. And I think that from... Its inception, uh, Dean had a strong sort of instinct and vision for where this would go. And so I think everything we've been doing has been working backwards from this point. And I think uh, the mark of something really special is uh, this is an ending that is the only right ending for this story. However, I don't know that anybody could anticipate it. And that's a special thing for this to end exactly the way it's supposed to and for people to still not see it coming. And, uh, and, and I think that's a that's a special thing yeah what about what for both of you inspires you the most about working on an animated film and and then getting to see it after it's ready yeah well I think the for me it's just the collaboration that it takes to make a movie like this it's hundreds of people and you know what we do is one fraction of the work that gets done to bring this to life and when I sit down to watch these movies I'm just as excited and blown away and surprised and thrilled as anyone else as a fan of the movies um, to see how the world comes together and I still have a million questions about how people do what they do to bring these to life we're such a small part of it but really just feeling so privileged to not only get to be a part of something like this but to be for this to be so beloved and and have made such an impact in so many people's lives. Yeah, it's hard not to be inspired when you know um, the the anticipation and the eager uh, eagerness with which children across the world are, are waiting for this thing. You know, um, th that that's that's pure. That's really pure. Um, and and the work itself is quite pure as well because it's just you. The scene and the microphone, right? Like there, there's no cameras, there's no set, there's nothing. So it's uh, you use your imagination, um, and 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 it keeps it very, very honest. And you also know that this world we've helped create um, means a heck of a lot to a lot of people across across the world. And so it's like, yeah, it's hard not to be inspired in that situation. A lot of the times when I talk to actors who have worked on uh, an animation film. They talk about the pros being you kind of roll out of bed, and there's no hair and makeup, it's kind of a relaxed yeah. recording session. Can you guys talk about that? And the, yeah. the stresses or the stress-free yeah. aspect to it? I love that about it. I love that I don't have to put on makeup or have a bunch of people staring at me or anything like that. And, 
And also, it's what's really cool is I've been able to do most of my work um, from back home in Canada. You know, I, I most of my work on uh, on all three movies and the TV show have been done in studios in in Montreal and Toronto, and so it doesn't it allows me to still be home and and have the life that I want. You know, um, but like she said before, we we do such a small piece of this thing, and you know. So in addition to it being not very taxing, um, you don't have to you know dress up or anything like that. In, in addition to that, after three years, you're rewarded with your participation by being a part of this special thing, unlike any other movie. So that's pretty cool. With it being the last film, the third and last film, what are you going to miss most, I guess, about this? And... Oh man, I mean, I'll, I'll miss recording as Astrid, but honestly, I'll. As a fan, I'll just miss that there's more coming, you know? Yeah. I think every time a, 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 a one of the movies came out, it was like more to anticipate. Another one's coming, the world's gonna get bigger, can't wait to revisit these characters, and now that there's this closure, um, I'm gonna miss I'm, I'm gonna miss getting to see the masterpieces come together. And on, I'm just, I'm Dean Dubois' like biggest fan, our director, I just think he's, a masterful storyteller and and manages always to hit all the notes that it takes to make a movie feel as intimate as this movie does and as grand as it does at the same time. What, I guess, are some animation films growing up you watch and you kind of look back and, and miss? Uh, Sword in the Stone is a big one. Um, probably Fox and the Hound was another big one in my house. So I did the Disney Robin Hood. Um, and the first... Uh, Transformers animated feature in 1987 where Optimus Prime got killed and that uh, really messed me up as a child. You recovered now? Or? I, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I still remember being in the movie theater and seeing the like teaser trailer for The Lion King oh my gosh. when it was like still two years away yeah. or something and it was like some other Christmas movie and they teased The Lion King and I just remember the feeling in my body of like, how am I going to wait? Like, how are we supposed to wait yeah. for this? And then I remember when it came out, it being everything you wanted and more. And, and also getting to grow up in a time where the, the animated movie musical was in such an incredible golden age with, you know, Aladdin and The Little Mermaid the and, and those movies, Beauty and the Beast. I mean, I still know every single word. I'm not going to say please that. Please so please don't ask. Please. Um, <laughs> but the, those movies meant so much to me. One thing that happens in the film is obviously the villain tries to take Toothless away from Hiccup. When in your lives, I guess, has someone tried to take something from you and you had to really like fight back for it? Jesus Christ. That got deeper. Deep. Yeah, that's, a heavy, that's a heavy question. Wow, wow, this is a therapy wow. session. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Um, my sister took my um, salt and pepper CD and I had to throw a remote control at her to get it back. Now you have to say salt and pepper. What? Now you have to say salt and pepper. And, uh, I, I could if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I met them recently. Oh, really? Yeah. so excited. That's so awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. Not um, the same as losing Toothless, no. obviously. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of, like, yeah, my soul every time that I work on a movie. <laughs> no, you know what? I actually have a context for this because... Um, my first dog that I had as an adult with my now husband, we were, you know, we, we got this dog together yeah. and he like made us a family and, and we had him for almost 10 years. And when he got sick and we knew we were losing him, it was probably the hard, up until then as an adult was like the hardest feeling in the world was to let go of this, this soul that like I had just loved and put so much into it, that I think that's what a lot of us feel when 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 we see the relationship between Hiccup and Toothless and really all the dragons and their Vikings is the love that we have for our pets who are like family. Uh, last question to wrap things up here. We're asking everyone, we've been asking everyone lately, what's a classic film you haven't seen yet but still need to? And something maybe you're embarrassed to admit you haven't seen. Oh God, so oh, yeah. Some people have said The Godfather, Titanic. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't call Titanic a classic. Okay. Uh, I mean, course, I watched uh, it 14 <laughs> times in the movie theaters. I, um, <laughs> I went to see it, too, but, uh, you know, I've you gone to see plenty of movies. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen Dr. Zhivago, and I feel like that's one that I really have to see. 
Um, Patty Jenkins wasn't able to finish it, she said. That was her answer, Oh, actually. really? Yeah. yeah. No, I haven't seen it at all. Oh, no. um, Howard's End, right, everyone? <laughs> I have started Citizen Kane so many times yeah. and have never finished it. That was another, I don't know, answer people have been saying. People yeah. have to see it. And Casablanca. They're very good films. Check it out. But what you should really check out is How to Train Your Dragon 3. The Hidden World. In theaters now. You will be able to finish this movie. <laughs> and it's, it, it'll go down as a classic, seriously. It, thank it, you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks thank for having you. us. Right now we're joined with the one and only Toothless. Toothless, thanks for uh, being here today. Now for those who want to get to the Hidden World, how do they get there? Okay, we'll, we'll stay away.